night. Good morning, everyone. Beautiful Saturday at Benny's parents' house. We're gonna try to finish up this patio today. Let's see where we are. And the main attraction, table. All right, guys, I think we're gonna have a little bit extra favors from our own design, so. Our end result, we're gonna leave a small flower bed here, but I think we're gonna have enough pavers to just kinda go straight up against the house, so. I think that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be digging in a post somewhere here to pop up, cause um, <laughs> Benny's dad's gonna put a light in that shines down on the table. All right, welcome back to the people that have been following along in this playlist. We're going to be wrapping up the uh, patio install today. And as I was explaining uh, before, uh, that flower bed area that we were going to leave as a flower bed, I think we're going to have enough pavers on site here to be able to just do um, bricks right up to the, to the foundation of the house. So that's the plan. Right now I'm just cutting all the excess uh, geotextile fabric out of the way so that I can uh, get this stone spread out correctly and uh, put down some more screed rails. If you haven't seen my other video, uh, these screed rails are just uh, one and a quarter inch outer diameter uh, gas pipe uh, galvanized so that they stay nice and strong. If you get anything uh, smaller than that, the pipes get kind of warped after a while and it can um, cause like sinkholes and dips in your uh, your patio when you lay it. But anyway, um, so how I'm setting these uh, screed rails in is if I'm looking at the house uh, towards like the the front of the table here we're keeping this patio level from side to side and what I'm doing is a little bit more than an eighth of a pitch towards the pond towards the yard when an eighth of a pitch for those that don't know is when the uh, bubble touches uh, just touches one side of the line on your level um, I did a little bit more I usually do a little bit more than an eighth of an inch just to uh, make sure we got a good uh, water runoff pitch and that's what we're doing we have it level side to side and a little bit more than an eighth of a pitch towards the lawn for any surface water to just flow freely off of the patio and as you see in there what you do uh, once you get a, a section screeded you pull the pipe out you fill in the empty channel that the pipe caused with more chipstone or your bedding sand whatever you use uh, smooth it out with a nice trowel and then uh, you could just kind of leapfrog the the pipe over to the next one uh, I try to have at least four or five pipes so I can set them up without having to move so many times but um, sometimes you just gotta you just gotta leapfrog the pipes
case you're wondering, these pavers are manufactured by Nico Lock, N I C O L O C K. Uh, I've used them uh, multiple times in the past. They're a good product, and the um, the type of paver, their uh, the name for it is called Alpine Ridge, and the color blend is called Granite City. It's got some nice uh, grays and blues in there. It's a nice um, nice color tone blend. I like it a lot. It comes with three different sizes, uh, 8 by 16, uh, 16 by 16, and also a 16 by 24. And that makes up for the, uh, the three size pattern. Um, I just lay it in a random uh, pattern, looking out for a few things uh, that I have explained in past videos. But number one thing is to make sure you don't have too long of joint lines. Any joint line that's longer than uh, four pavers can really um, take away from the look of the patio. It's just, uh, we call it the, a, a long running bond. That's something you really want to look out for. You don't want um, long joint lines. You also don't want four ways where the pavers meet at four corners. It kind of looks like a, um, a division in the patio. And uh, like I said, it just makes for um, something that catches your eye and pulls away from the random um, pattern or random look. And uh, the other thing is you don't want to be putting a lot of um, same sizes right next to each other because it will catch your eye as well. But other than that, we just laid in a random pattern and uh, try to use it layer by layer. And a very important thing as well is when you um, start laying pavers is to use uh, layers from different palettes because the color blends can vary from palette to palette. So make sure you look out for that. Alright everyone, we're killing, we're killing it over here. My nephew's killing it over there. And he's killing it over here. And his dad killed it on the light post. We're just all killing it here. I mean, we're killing it. We're killing it. So, all the back up against the house excavated. Compacted. Got some fabric down. One more piece of fabric to go here, but we're good. We get ourselves to grade, and we're gonna extend the patio right to the house. We got the pavers, so we're gonna do it. Stay tuned, guys. All right, we're on to setting this light post here with some concrete. Um, but I did want to take a minute and say, uh, if you're still with me on this, guys, and you've been watching these uh, hardscape videos and you're not subscribed, um, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. It really helps the uh, the channel with growth, and um, I appreciate it big time. Uh, I enjoy making these videos, and I enjoy sharing my work with you guys, and I also appreciate feedback, so hit me up with comments about whatever you want. All right, guys, I know if you're wondering if this is plum or not. Let's check it out. Is that way? good that way so that's just a quick makeshift um, bracket to hold it nice and steady and plumb as it dries and then we'll take those screws out and there's your post
Good morning, everyone. Back to Benny's parents' house. Gonna finish up the patio today. We got just this one little area left. Benny's grabbing stone. We're gonna do one more section of pipe. Right here. Maybe over here. So we can uh, lay a little bit more. But then the next step is we have to get these propane tanks unhooked. Taking off that grass area, put aside. Gonna dig all that out, put stone, lay pavers, and then we'll put the tanks back on top of the patio after it's done. So that should uh today should be really the last day we need to finish this up. This is really all we got to lay. And then it's just a matter of making our cut around the edge and laying in our border. So it's gonna be a busy day, fun day, good day, about 80 something today. So we're excited. Can't wait to see this thing done. So stay tuned, guys. All right, real quick about this uh, drainage pipe. It's going to be hooking up to that downspout um, to the left of the uh, propane tanks. And we're just letting that drain right into our open grade base. Um, some people may have problems with that, but I don't. Uh, when you have a downspout like that, spitting onto um, just the grade and the, the lay of the land, the only thing that happens with that surface water, guys, is it slowly permeates into the ground. And uh, this open grade base is the same thing you would use as um, digging a big dry well and uh, diverting all your downspouts into it. So that's what I love about the open grade base is that, uh, you know, it's pretty much just a very big dry well underneath your patio. So that downspout's um, catching water from the back um, left half of the house. So it's really not that much water and we can just let it drain right into our base and it will just permeate down into the ground as it would normally. Guys, we're coming to the end of uh, laying our patio pavers. This was a uh, very fun, 
fun job. Um, there's one more part to this uh, playlist and that is going to be how we cut and installed our double border um, that goes around the entire edge as you see here. Um, it's a really cool funky shape of the patio. We kind of uh, tried to do that to stay away from the tree roots as much as possible. But again, check out the next video guys, the last video in this playlist of how we cut and installed that double border. Until the next one, God bless.